group would be interested would be interested in proposing as phase one. Let me just pull my notes up real quick so that I can make sure that I'm. Um, I took notes last night, so I will uh, be able to just read those. So that's easy. Hold on one second. Um, okay, so they talked about phase one. Um, well, first of all, they talk about what's existing. Do you want me to go over what's existing at Deer Hill and Milliken? I think we all know. Uh, I think everybody knows what's already up there. And we, I sent the presentation. They did give me the presentation, so I sent that out to you guys. And there's a draft here. Two, two oh, yeah, here. that's right. Very good. And Derek was there too, so um, he knows what we talked about. But so what they are um, considering phase one is redoing the tennis courts um, with five tennis courts and five pickleball courts, all with lighting. Um, and as Derek knows, there's a butters uh, behind there. So um, we'll the group will have to tread pretty lightly with um, figuring out the lighting over there. Um, the overall footprint would expand slightly to the west and would include um, updating the re replacing the retaining wall that is between the tennis courts and the pl playing fields right now. Um, the because it's falling apart, there's structural issues with it. Um, so that's phase one for the for Milliken. And they recognize that the bathrooms are already going in and everyone is very pleased about that. Um, then for the uh, for Milliken, what they were proposing is um, a sports wall. Um, we were calling it a lacrosse wall, now we're calling it a sports wall because it can be used for other sports. Instead of having it at Sawyer Street, Activities is proposing that we have it at Milliken. Um, no, Deer Hill. Deer, Deer Hill. I'm so sorry, at Deer Hill. Um, they are proposing sports lighting um, and making the field there into a larger regulation size lacrosse field. Um, they did talk about other potential sites for the sports wall at Deer Hill. Um, one being just north of the access road where the cars and buses uh, take kids to and from uh, Osgood. Um, there are a number of reasons why that's not going to work. Um, but where they had it positioned, I think you can see from the slides, is uh, towards the bottom of the slide, um, sort of tucked back in the corner just to the left of the baseball diamond. Um, so people seemed pretty excited about uh, moving forward with phase one. Um, there was some discussion about funding for something like this, although the, the price tag was not mentioned. They're hoping in the next two to three weeks, they should have some rough estimates for how much phase one would cost. But um, Jean Dippold mentioned that there's really just not a lot of money for something like this, and it would likely um, have to go to CPC, the select board, the advisory committee. We'd have to get all of their buy-in. Um, we may need, uh, we, we would likely have to get a vote at, at a town meeting, and we might even have to do um, a ballot, um, a vote on a town-wide ballot for money for a project of this size. So it was a bit of a downer hearing that, um, or, or reality check. I don't know how you want to look at it. Um, but anyway, that sort of, I think, summarizes the discussion. But if I've missed something important, Derek, please chime in. How about John? Did you have anything from Tim that you want to say? I know Tim and I talked to. Uh... No, that was pretty much uh, exactly how, uh, how Tim laid it out for me as well. So that was perfect. I think the one thing, there's a couple of things. I know there there was some people that did speak about the path for the kids to get to school to make sure that was still active. Um, because there are, you know, dozens of kids that go from Osgood to and Jer Hill through the path and tennis for Norfolk, and then dozens of kids that go from the middle of high school crossing the field going through the path. So they yeah. want to make sure that's still good. Um they talk about parking because remember they were talking about. So we're going to add parking down in the back, which you can't do because that's it. Well, that, that because actually, one, one plan there I did see was I think it's phase two. Um, if they want to do it, it's a weird, I don't know how they're going to pull it off, but 
Yes. Jeff, you might see it better. Yes, they that's true. It. So you know how when we had met with them, they had showed us parking on that private way or that little street that's not paved right. very well. Um, and they realized that they cannot put parking on that street because it's a private way. So their second idea was to put squeeze it in just above, if you're looking at the picture, I don't have it in front of me, but if I'm imagining it just above where the pickleball and tennis courts are squeezed in between the courts and the abutters on, um, I think it's Norfolk Street, right? Derek, is that right? Um, yeah, it's a, coming off Pleasant. Oh, Pleasant. So it's it looks a bit um, awkward, um, but that was going to be part of phase two, I believe. Um, they did not have parking included in phase one from for what I can remember. This is from Reservoir. Yes, yeah, so I think a, I oh, think that's okay. Reservoir is not a real road. I think it's a reservoir which goes up to the water tank. Yes, it's a path. It's, it's some sort of a path. And that's where all the kids walked to school. That was the path that was brought up. I didn't get the feeling from any of the pictures of the, the discussion that any of the the kids' current routes to and from school would be affected, that they would still be able to find their way to and from school. I don't think anything would be blocked off. But nothing's been cited yet. You know, this hasn't been fully vetted, so I, I can't say that for sure. Derek, I know you're one of the closest to butters to the pickleball <laughs> lights. So <laughs> any comments or anything that well, I mean I think it's 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 pretty early. For me to weigh in right now and that's what was apparent on the call yesterday is everything's very early in the planning and i i i i think it's i mean look the, the it's an awesome plan right the tennis courts need it desperately um as an abutter though and, and knowing some of my neighbors um it's it's, it's pretty uh there's there's so much to be vetted and, and to start asking people to pay more taxes too without having some of these details vetted that are pretty substantial in terms of costs i brought up stormwater last night and and that's pretty significant i know and i know all the neighbors know about the runoff up there um and uh i mean that's probably a big thing with parking too just still not being vetted i mean the parking is whatever it is what it is up there um but I think there's still there's still a few few things to iron out, but definitely something's got to happen. I think phase two for you, Katie. I think there are some <clears throat> there are some of the things. I think they're talking about a walking path around all of Millican in phase two, and then exercise equipment as, a, along the walking path. We're going to be depending on walking path and exercise equipment. Yeah. New I, I don't I don't remember us talking about that last night. We really just focused on phase one. I'm I'm not familiar with all that phase two was. Okay. Well, the the um the focus when we started this with activity cost, right? Was the we, we looked at tons of statistics that said that the fields were way overtaxed and we don't have enough fields for the number of kids mm -hmm. that we need playing on them. It seems like Phase one, the only improvement to address that concern is putting lights on the backfield at Deer Hill, right? Because it's the same space, there's yeah. no bigger space. I think making a little bit there's wider. One there, there's one change. I agree with you, but there is one change. The field currently at Deer Hill is not regulation size lacrosse. So we can't use that for lacrosse currently. Uh, they received complaints from officials. So it, their plan in this first phase is to make that field regulation size, which would allow teams to play at Deer Hill officially. Okay. That okay. is one clarification I just want to make. I should have made that clear before. Okay, thank you. Yeah. And is that, did they say that include leveling the field or is it, you know, essentially just... I think so. Yeah, I think in the plan. Is there a lot of, yeah. There are a lot of it definitely looks wider from the original, uh, on the... Uh, Phase two, well, it's probably phase one also too. Okay. Yeah, um, it's longer and wider. Because it is, it is a, the field is not level right now, so they're said they're heading more towards Oscar a little bit. Oh gosh, I didn't know that. So, um, Julie, what was the um, the last? What did they say to conclude last night? Just. Um, they said that uh, we're going to meet again in three weeks. Um, they want us to 
start talking about phase one and getting people excited about it so that um, in the near future, we could have a public meeting or public forum where we could get a lot of folks who are interested and excited and enthusiastic about this to speak um, to its advantages um, and hopefully address some of the concerns of abutters and other community residents who may not be as jazzed up about this. Um, and they're hoping next week to have some preliminary figures um, but as far as I could tell, it was just, let's meet again in three weeks. Okay. Any questions? Um, so I'll just go through, I'm just going to go through the packet. Um, I do need some votes tonight. Um, like after the minutes in the packet, there was a, a field matrix based on requests from lacrosse, soccer, and high school. I have... We're, so we're just taking care of the town. The, the old matrix used to include Dare Hill, front and back. That's all going through the school department now. So um, I know Dave reached out to me last night about the lacrosse time here, but I basically went with last year's agreed schedule where lacrosse has Monday and Tuesday, soccer has Wednesday, Thursday, they share Friday. Um, Saturday is all soccer, and Sunday there's more usage for lacrosse. I've been looking on Sundays. We do have a little, we, we set aside some time for ourselves because we do a frisbee clinic. Uh, so they have one field all day and then the other field as soon as we're done with the clinic. We might, that may be earlier than 12 if they want, you know, if we readjust our schedule a little bit. Um, the only thing that I see just notice here is that three, I got double check that three to 7.30 on Sundays, you can cross off for high school, it does not, you know, so Sunday, CHS, three to seven. They, they did not ask for Sunday time. It was just probably copied over from the, from the other day. So they're, they're three to 7.30, Monday through, Friday, Monday through Friday. And it's also depending on their games or practices, um, occasional JV lacrosse game up there. Um, for Beachwood, you know, they've got the JV baseball team there. I did put in Special Olympics, but they're not till after high school's over. And other than the CYSBA will fill in the, the blanks around for the spring league after JV. But uh, so except for that one Sunday, three to seven o'clock, uh, three to seven thirty, I'd love to get a motion just to approve this so they can they can you know stop planning ahead. I have asked them to wait so the field is dry, you know, just you know, some people put March 20th and it's you know that's never available that early. Um, I'm actually looking to have them go like baseball and start after April vacation because you know, it's just uh, usually the first two weeks in April, usually always wet. You know, we're telling them to push it back a day, push it back a day. So the soccer has been doing that. They've been pushing back their schedule. Um, a lot depends on the turf, too. Rumor has it they might have cut the turf down this week. So it's ready to play. Uh, I think they did glue it. Um, so I think it's a it, joke. It should be ready. So to become a little buyer here first. Motion to approve the schedule. Yeah. We have a second. I second, Julie. All those in favor signify saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Favor. So that, Julia, was Jeff and then you on the motion. Thank you. Um, so the next thing in my packet was just, you know, last time we met was the day before our middle school registration. And um, it went great. You know, you know everybody got in. Um, so the numbers and the highlight is just the, what are, how many, how many kids we took per week and how many people on the wait list. Um, so we actually have a couple, we have one week that is a little bit slow, and I think it's because nobody knows what Boda Borg is, so we're going to do a little publicity stunt for that, the brand new place in Malden we're going to go to. We actually rented the place with Hingham, and we're going to split the rental fee, which is pretty high, so either they're going to buy spots back, if, if, we, if our number doesn't go up, Hingham's going to buy spots from us, so we're not. What is it? Five thousand dollars for not doing the place out. And then what is what is Boda Borg? It's a I wouldn't know. Escape room in Malden, escape room trampoline, it's got everything. Everything, all right. Uh, so we gotta get the word out. We'll send posters up there. <clears throat> and, and actually the, the interesting too with the um, week six, week five, it's always been a slow week for us. So we put the two favorite field trips in and now we realize it's a slow week because it's, I think it's the last week of sailing and the last week of swim team. Mm -hmm. So they both have these huge days, uh, wrap ups of the seasons that, that, that first week in August. And that's why, these two trips that usually fill immediately and have huge wait lists, doesn't have it. And, you know, the funny thing is they used to, both the Salem Club and Swim Team used to have their last days, our, our last week of camp. 
and they moved it the week earlier because they couldn't mess they couldn't mess with our flag opera kids at bus. So yeah, so but those are the numbers. You know, we we actually taken three bus loads in week two because uh, those both those sites can handle it. Um, and we're actually taking a few more for six flags because we have two coach buses that can, that can fit 56 people. So, um, but no, it's going well. Like I said, we just have to fill weeks three and five. Um, the next thing is I'm going along with like winter programs here. You know, we offered a program on Jan January, Friday, January 13th uh, called First Aid for Kids. It's with an organization called South Shore Safety that does our babysitting and home alone classes. This was a for the, for the instructor who was a doctor, Dr. Mitchell here, it was her first time teaching the class ever. Uh, so she was a little nervous going upstairs with the kids. And the story I wanna tell you guys is that there was a young girl from France that just moved to town about a month ago. And two weeks ago, her mother almost choked to death her, and her daughter saved her, learning the Heimlich at this, at this class. So we are gonna do a story. Um, I think the police are probably gonna present a lifesaver award to the girl. But um, I actually reached out to the instructor and she was, I was telling her she was shaking. She was, she, it's, you know, so we we're going to do a nice little story about that. Um, so I, that's why I include that information on that page. Um, the next thing in my pack is just our safe voting classes. We, this is actually going up to the morning list uh, this week because, you know, we, do, we always do these classes. We have a navigation class next month, which we're trying to get five, it only needs five people. Because they, you know, so we're trying to find five people to make learn this that keeps on getting lost out to see. And then they get, you know, it's a, a very small class. So this is going on the morning list um, this next week. Um, the police department reached out to me about doing a, they did this last year. They, they ran a mass environmental police class right on the same week as ours. And I asked them to try to not to do the same time as ours because their program is free. Uh, the one comment that was made here by the police officer was that his program is the only class that's NSDLA approved for voting safety. That is not the case. Obviously, the Coast Guard class is a licensed course. They get certificates and licensed kids. So I did ask him if he promotes his program to not say that because you know it affects our stuff. Um, and you know, he, I know he's, you know, Josh is a great guy, but, you know, we've had a 40 year, 40 year relationship with the Coast Guard Auxiliary. And, you know, I just, I would never want to break it. So that's, you know, so there, there'll be some more safe voting classes going on in Coasa this spring. <clears throat> the, um, Tim and I met with Chris Sr. last night. Um, the recreation fair is going to happen. Uh, we're going to call it the community recreation fair because it's got a lot of community components to it. The health department's not going to be involved. Um, we're still working on the logistics with the, the farmers market with the Hubleys and Linda Fechner, which I hope gets done tomorrow. Um, but you know we're going to we're going to we're going to go for it, and we're going to do the four o'clock playground registration. You know one o'clock you know one o'clock people can come. We can check their webs, make sure like your accounts all set up before. We have talked to our web designer, and what will happen is between March February twenty sixth and March twenty sixth. Parents will go in and do the fill out the form, download immunization records and photos. <clears throat> they have one month to do it. And that'll give them the, um, at four o'clock on Sunday, March 26th, <clears throat> that'll give them opportunity to go in. If they don't have all three things done, then they won't be to register. So we'll do a heavy publicity stunt. We'll, um, we'll, get, we'll get a hold of everybody from last year. But they have one month just to go in, fill the form out and download. It'll take two minutes to do, do everything. But you know, we know we got to push this because our goal is on, at four o'clock on Sunday, March 26th. Like Katie, when you register, you know what you got into and you're all paid. All the paperwork's in. In the last couple of years since COVID, we've been chasing people for months to get the forms in, pay the second half. This will be done on March 26th. What do you need from us for that day? As we get close, we'll, we can talk next month. <clears throat> what, we, what I do need is once we have to change the application, I'll get them to you and just think of vendors. You know, we, I was thinking about Earth Day. Earth Day is, you know, we reach out to Peter Pescatore and say, you should have a table. Uh, e, there's that, um, farm, whatever, EOC, some kind of program that we want to hit up. Um, Earth Fest, different from um, Earth Day. Um, we did reach out. The, the Boy Scouts came to see me today and I, they asked how many tables they can have. I said, you guys, measure one. Uh, they're good. We have like four or five kids doing 
Eagle Scout projects. We have four or five kids doing National Honor Society projects. My goal is to get each one on the table. But what they're doing, if they're raising funds for something, like the teriyaki boy, who's doing he's doing benches at Millican and Surrey Street that have solar panels in them that kids can charge their phones. So he's going to soccer, asking for money. He's going to basketball, asking for money. And he's going to do a project. He's doing the next little benches out. That way, the kids are out there. And they <laughs> and I've, I've, I've found four kids out there in the last five years out there with no, their phones are dead. And the parents don't know where they are. <laughs> and they don't want to walk. So, you know, it's, so this will solve that problem because, you know, um, so that's a great project. And there's another boy doing a, that replaces the steps going from Milliken down to Bancroft Way because those are all brought away. And we have another project where a girl is going to paint the dugouts or the sheds at Milliken. Um, so we have a lot of different things going on. So, but um, we're going to do our youth sports sale with Charlie, NHS project. We're going to do the, 143 clothing exchange are going to be there. Uh, beach stickers will be on sale. So we're going to, we just got to fill the place, um, get vendors. Jack, I'll be hitting you up for the Hubley call maybe tomorrow night. So, um, the other, uh, so last night, Tim and Kim Roy and I uh, interviewed Emily Robbins for the playground director job, and she knocked it out of the park. She had a great interview. Um, Kim loved her. You know, so the three of us spoke after she left and said, let's, let's go, let's do it. So I do need a vote for you guys to, you know, put, you know, uh, well, first I let, I put her cover letter in, in her resume. I mean, I think you all know her anyways, but um, she's been with us. She moved into town 2003. She said, I think she, she started playing around 2004, went to extreme for three or four years and then started as a junior volunteer and been with us since 2004. Uh, except for the year from COVID. So she's been Kate's right hand man for two or three years now. Uh, ran the Deer Hill program. Knows everybody in town. Babysits for everybody in town. Uh, and I think she's a, a great candidate. So, so I just need a motion to. Yeah, I need a motion to uh, approve Emily Robbins. Motion. Motion. Second. Second. Okay, any discussion? Hey, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 And who was who was first and second? Sorry. Uh, Katie then Jeff. Thank you. Okay, hey, motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Um, I mean, the last thing I have really is just that I've been working on the town report for this year. Um, so I just wanted I gave you a copy when I just to just remind me of it. We've done the rec center all afternoon, so it's working on it. So I just want to let you, you know, I'll, I'll work on this draft. I'll send it to you guys before we, we send it to the, this goes to the town report that goes to that nice book they do. Uh, so this is last year's draft. I will change everything to 22 and add some new things that we did last year. Um, I made a list of things when I was sitting down there today, things to add. Um, obviously, you want to, I'm going to, you know, you got to thank Todd and Liz Devaney, who was on the board, uh, who left. Allison, I couldn't remember. Oh no, yeah, Allison's not here. Um, I couldn't remember who was on the uh, who Allison replaced in 2020 because I forgot to put it on here. But I think she was filling in for somebody in between. And you know, but you know, I'll talk about the um, our, the big. You know, obviously last summer, the huge summer we had, return to normal, um, the rec center, you know, rise, the race. Um, I'll probably mention how, how it was a challenging summer last year. Every way through. Um, each for playground the, the mentioned that, that they're starting to raise funds to replace that. And I, you know, I thought it was CMI rowing. We got them back full force this winter. So I'll, I'll throw them in there too. So I don't have anything else. EcoPest, that's what I'm thinking of. EcoPest is not a program that I can spring up. We'll try to get the table for now, but yeah. that's all I have. I mean, that's winter and spring. The, you know, the our goal is to put the brochure out the the day after the rec fair. So go to the field boxes right afterwards. So we're jumping, you know, working ahead schedule because we also have to put the fall brochure out early this year because school goes back early. So we're going to put the fall brochure out. Said that the Labor Day, we, they go back to school on Wednesday and Thursday at the end of August. So we're going to try to get the brochure out that Monday before school starts. 
Uh, so we have two early deadlines for the brochure. And I think everything, but you know, as of, if it's chance as it is right now, we're going to do a baseball camp with the high school team the last week of June. That'll be sponsored by us, the Diamond Club, which is the baseball boosters and the high school team. And the goal is to put, we'll get a third, the Diamond Club, which is the baseball boosters, will get third. And then we'll put a third into a, a field fund just for baseball. Because we, you know, right now, nobody, we don't collect fees for baseball. But, but that'll, between the Diamond Club and the third for the field fund, if they need work, you know, they've always asked us for money, but you know, no, not, nobody comes in to give it back out. So this so the Diamond Club will help sponsor event. You know, we, the town did approve a new rake, those infield rakes that are smaller, so they can take care of home to first and third home, because that's the one thing that's the been lacking is a rake that this an infield rake that's you know messed up the carves up the dirt. Um, and those home to first and third home is never couldn't be done because the rake is just too long. Uh, so town meeting approved that. <clears throat> and I think that's really it. I mean, we're going applications for kids is due next Friday. Now that we got Emily on board, hopefully she'll interview all the staff in March. Um, and I, I like to try to get those cut off the letters off April first. So we're a good we're in a good place. Everything's looking good. So um, okay, one of the committee reports. Yeah. Yeah, we have not had a meeting since the last time I reported back here, so I don't have an update. Okay. John's not here. No, John's here. John, John do you have an open space report? Hey, guys. <clears throat> Sorry. Yeah, I'll try to keep it short because I'm sure the reception's not great or my the sound is not great. But um, the only one thing I wanted to raise or that uh, the open space committee asked me to raise at this meeting was um, they have taken an interest in something that Hingham is doing right now, which is um, they are looking for uh, to ban the uh, commercial sale or distribution of water in single use plastic. Um, so apparently I'd, I'd have to learn exactly what stage that's at in Hingham, but it's something that they are, um, I, I think working towards a town vote on. Um, if I understand it correctly. And so the open space committee are just in a very, very preliminary exploratory um, stage right now. And I think all they are um, asking us for is just um, whether this is something that we would be willing to um, support uh, as they sort of push it forward. Any comments? John, is there anything that um from open space? I mean, I know open space has had a table at the rec fair in the past. So if it, is there anything that you know that's like Earth Day or EcoFest? I know EcoFest was a big thing last year that um, but I think they the, the girl that organized it moved out of town. But um, if you want to keep us on the in the loop, I mean, talk to open space about having a table for any projects. Yeah. That you want to do. So. Yeah, yeah, I can I can talk to them, and I think there there's I think Marissa and a few of the others are are still, you know, pushing the eco fest. Um, so um, yeah, that's that's kind of a, a lot of the, the folks on open space are are tied to that as well. But I, I think what I would oh sorry can we I, and I, I'll be happy to do that, Ted. Can we just um, kind of go back to the and I'm I'm happy to I think I have the template of of kind of how it's being framed up uh on in the town of Hingham um and I'm happy to if I'm allowed to uh sort of share that with everybody when I get to you know off of uh interstate I-84 mm -hmm. um but um you do you think again, just, is that single use span or I'm or say that you, one more time do you think when the rec board now for that single use not yeah, necessarily, but I think I think what they would be what they're looking to gauge is just whether or not, you know, when when things do start to, you know, sort of hopefully uh, gain momentum, whether, you know, we would be willing to, you know, support them. Um, I think that's what they're just trying to get to at, at this point. So I don't think we necessarily have to, um, you know, vote on anything just yet, but just sort of uh, if there was any initial feedback or concerns or questions, um, I'd love to be able to sort of take that back to them. 
John, do you know who's moving that forward in the town of Hingham? Is it a private citizens group? Is it uh, the rec committee in Hingham? I, I know that they're um, they're doing a good job, the open space committee is, of like sort of reaching out to the other open space committees and sort of just sharing best practices and things like that. So it may be a similar, maybe a similar group, but I, I can, I can, um, I think that's a great question and let me, let me find out. The other question I would have is what are they going to replace it so kids can get having water? I mean, right. I, I think. Yeah, I think that's a great question too, is making sure that obviously, you know, everyone has their, um, you know, hydro flasks and, and, and other uh, aluminum containers and things like that now, but it's to, to give them to make sure that there's access at the, the places that need access um, is another, is another good question. Um, so let me, let me bring those two back. Um, okay. Any, anybody else have any um, initial thoughts, questions or concerns? Yeah, um, it's Julie. So I am not familiar with what they're thinking about doing in Hingham. And I'm just curious, I'm trying to imagine what this looks like. Would this involve not eliminating the sale of bottles of water at Shaw's and Stop and Shop and all Cohasset grocery stores? So you wouldn't, for example, be able to go and buy a case of bottled like waters, for example, would it include something like that? I think that that would be correct. Um, and, you know, so I think it would probably be similar to, I guess, a version of what we saw roll out with, you know, the ban on plastic bags and, yeah. and things like that. Yeah, that's, that's what I was picturing too. Okay. And yes, my, my concern is just about having, how are they going to establish water bottle filling stations all over town so that we can ensure that kids and everyone for that matter um, has easy uh, read, you know ready access to water because everybody should have that okay yeah let me um I first of all thank you everybody for um, having some um, some nice thoughts there and let me go back to open space and get some answers and in the meantime Ted is it I'm okay to share the document that I have that sort of lays out the um, the Hingham version is that something I'm allowed to email to the group yeah, yeah, definitely. And no, do Derek or Katie have any, any comments about the water? Uh, I was just going to mention that, just commented back in my hometown, they, they did the same thing. They banned single use plastics, they banned straws, plastic bags, helium balloons, they banned everything. Um, but one of the things they did for the single use plastic bottles was they just had to be able to be recycled. Just a thought that this gets, that this will get a lot of pushback. Yeah, John, if you want to, I got Derek's email. If you want to hit, you know, hit him up for, for the conversation about that. Yeah, that, that would be, that would be great. Um, and Derek, I'm sorry. I, uh, I, I'm not sure if I heard the second half of that. It sounds like you live somewhere where they went through a similar process, but what was the outcome? Oh, they, I, I grew up in Nantucket and they banned basically everything not recyclable out there. They have to, um, but yeah, no, they 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 passed it. They just um, single use plastic bottles. You can still you get them, but they have to be recyclable. So a lot of the ones are you know they can't be recycled. Gotcha. <laughs> right. I'm just point. I'm not saying any. Nothing to see over here. <laughs> Using it as an example. I'm from <laughs> why, why can't that be recycled? I don't get it. Can't why can't Katie's bottle be recycled? Excellent exhibit A. I think it's the type of plastic that they what? use. What? Yeah. I, I, it might not be that one. It's just ones that are like that. Like the ones you get at CVS, the type of plastic that like, can't be recycled or something. I had no idea. I've been throwing those in my recycling bin. I shouldn't be doing that. It says if please it, recycle. If it can, it might be the right type of plastic. Some of them See? can't. There's certain I'm plastics good. that you can't recycle. Okay. 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 Good. I'll I'll look for that. I never considered that any plastic bottle wouldn't be able to be recycled. And yeah. just a little thing that I find a little bit kind of funny. I would be very pleased with myself if I were the owner of Everybody Water right now. I was just going to say, they're behind this. <laughs> I, I think this is just a minor concern, but like being a teacher in the classroom, not all my kids have access to a like hydro glass or right. something like that. And to provide kids with that can be pricey. Um, and like, I know I have room parents who will drop off like many. Yes. 
you know, bottles of water for those kids. Right. Their A can't afford something like that. Um, and I know we have a hydration station in our school, but it's all, it's only on one floor, you know, all the way down. And so then that makes kids leave the classroom often. I know it sounds silly, but it's, it's our big thing this year is time on learning. <laughs> <laughs> and just to make sure the kids can stay hydrated, I guess, too. Well, my so days at the high school, all I remember is coats and jackets that were left all over the place. So now we're going to have Yetis everywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, it already happened. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, that was awesome, folks. Thanks. Okay. Um, all of those are great points. And um, let me, uh, we have our next meeting on February 28th. And um, Look for uh, some some uh, you know a quick one pager you know reading material from me in the meantime. Well, John, I should point yeah, out that the did. hydration station that we have at across the street was three thousand dollars. When I went to get a quote for the rec center, it's now five thousand dollars, so we couldn't afford it for the rec center mm -hmm. at this point. You know, until we do a fundraiser. But um, just to point that out, that those things are not not cheap. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, good point. Awesome. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, John. I might ask for one more vote. We're going to, you know, for our summer basketball league, our yes. girls' numbers have been very low. Um, so we want to allow girls, non residents, to be, you know, the Central Girls, Hall Girls. Our numbers are like, we, our league is like third grade through eighth grade because we have so little girls for what? Basketball. Our summer basketball league. Oh, summer. Okay. Our, and I guess it's throughout town, too. I and mean, the numbers are. Com you know, comparably lower. Um, so I want to, I probably want to get a quick vote because I think we did announce that we we're taking on residents for girls, but, but I want you guys to vote on it first. Uh, so it's a girls basketball league, summer, summer you know, allowing non residents to register. Uh, for we, I, we haven't discussed it. I don't know if you guys want to charge a little higher or for a non resident fee. Uh, that's totally up to you, too. I think we're, I think they, what our costs were, maybe 135, 150. You know, 135 for the first month and 150 as we start making teams, try to get people registered. So, just I just want to get a vote on non residents, and it's something we work with Chris Candy. He's going to work on getting girls so we can have full divisions. <laughs> right now, we have divisions of two teams that are just playing each other every single game. Uh, so, we'd like to try to get to three or four all the way from third grade up to eighth grade. We you, have, you repeat your motion. I would, well, two things a motion to it. Allow us to take non residents for the girl, the outdoor basketball league for girls. And then I'll let you guys decide who I charge a, a different fee for non residents. It's like 10, maybe $10. It feels like you shouldn't make the barrier any higher if the point is to get the registration up. But yeah, whatever you guys decide. I mean, um, so if somebody wants to make it, I mean, well, let's talk about money first. Let me just, if you guys. Well, one, one idea. Um... I agree. One idea it would be to, for this year, have it be the exact same amount for non-residents and Cohasset residents. If we get a lot of interest in future years, maybe we bump it up for the non-residents. Yeah. Yeah, I would agree. agree. We keep it at one price. Okay. Yeah. So I think we have a separate 135. One, 135 started at the end of the rec fair. We raised to 150 May 1st so we can get people okay. to register before. How the rest of you feel we don't have to vote that way. Yes, yes. one favor. Yeah. Yes, I just need a vote for to accept non-residents for the girls' basketball outdoor program. And how many nay votes do we need to shut you down this thing that you already approved and moved forward with? What? <laughs> you said that I don't think we actually got approval for it. It was just posted somewhere that okay. without without I, I want you to vote on it because it shouldn't have been posted first. So it hasn't been publicized at all. I uh, make a motion to open up the summer basketball girls program to non residents. A second. A second. Okay, yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> You're here. Nice. Any questions? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. That is all I have. Does uh, anybody else have anything? Or? Um, yeah, the only other thing I wanted to bring up is, um, and and again, just because I'm driving, uh, Ted, you may want to um, add some color commentary to this, but this was a uh, part of uh, Tim and I, um, our, our walk this morning, 
was um, just surfacing the, um, for those of you who don't, aren't familiar with the Cohasset Swim Center, um, that's kind of run by a separate organization and group of trustees. And one of those trustees um, sort of informally reached out to us and um, just was inquiring about, um, they've had some challenges with their sort of, I would call it their, on the operational side, like in terms of, you know, I guess staffing and kind of the back end of, of that. And, and we're, we're kind of interested in, you know, at least, uh, you know, curious about the possibility of bringing that, you know, sort of folding that in, I guess you would say with, um, you know, what the rec department does, because I think that's such a um, high standard and, and such a well-oiled machine. Um, so Ted, I don't know if there's anything you want to um, sort of color commentary on that, but um, nothing right. we really need to vote on or, or think about much more now. Maybe it's something we can go into more detail at, at the next meeting, but I at least just kind of wanted to get it on, on people's radar. And this wouldn't change, like, you know, the trustees there would still be the trustees and, um, you know, no, no, no major changes like that. It's just, um, you know, maybe there's a way to, um, you know, sort of bring the two organizations a little closer in some ways. I, I mean, it came up about, I think, well, what year is this? So about four or five years ago, one of this, the same person that Tim's talking to reached out to me about us taking over the management of the swim center where we hire the staff and, you know, control the lifeguards, the WSIs, all the staffing. Uh, the trustees would stay as is. This shows to be a financial mechanism where we, um, you get paid to manage the pool uh, from the things. I mean, there's some advantages to it. I mean, the biggest advantage was that they came to me about five years ago was that we always know summer's coming. We, you know, that, that was a little joke that he mentioned that sometimes they forget when June comes around. And they, you know, but we, we plan our, you know, we start hiring the summer one, you know, we do it, you know, so what happened this year was it is brought up, you know, they had a tough summer. Um, so the town's going to be a little bit wishy-washy on this until they see them having a great summer, one good summer. But, you know, I wish they reached out to us in September. And that's when the, they talked to me about a little bit of the management. And I wasn't talked to, to two weeks ago about taking over everything this, this summer. And I basically said, that's, we, we can't do it. Like I said, we, you're, he was already two months after we already started our hiring process. Like we have to post positions for a town department. So the goal is um, for them to hire a very good professional this year that helps fix things up there. And then, you know, I've recommended someone, one of my colleagues who's retiring, who's a pool and beach guy, lifeguard manager, and say, have him go in there. Hopefully that they can make his price. And he'd give us a blessing this summer and say, this is a, well, a great organization, it's ready. And they come to us in September. You know, and then negotiation can happen in September, October with the town. Because I think the town, town management has to be involved. This is a major thing. But, you know, it makes sense. We, you know, we hire, I mean, it'd be a lot of work. I mean, lifeguard shortages are a big thing. Um, you know, it's just, when I go to software meetings, and I sit there with my colleagues, I run pools and beaches, and I hear that they're shutting beaches and pools down because they don't have staffing. It does scare me, but I think this is a nice, people want to work up there. Um, we would just be able to control everything. It helps us with our summer camp because we can have, um, get to pick our times. And right. control, control lessons, control, control the usage of the pool. Um, so, I mean, there are some advantages. I mean, and just, but it has to be a bigger, bigger conversation. Um, and they need to prove that, <clears throat> We just can't do it this summer. So they need to hire a pro that can do it and who I hope they can trust and they can say, say to you guys in September that this is a great organization, things are back to normal. Um, obviously you need to hire a great pool director. And then we need, that has to be started in September. Um, get a pool director on board for the following summer. Um, so that's, I think that's pretty much, John, I think I covered everything there. Yeah, that was, that was perfect. And I, yeah, I don't, I don't think that, you know, uh, necessarily this summer is the, you know, the, if, if it's going to take a certain amount of time to get it, to do it right. I think, I think everybody's okay with, with taking that time. 
Um, so um, your your sort of intermediate step seems um, sounds interesting. I don't think the town will let us do it anyways right now. <laughs> After what happened last summer, I think they, they they want to make sure that pool is operational before they invest uh, our resources into that. They want to make sure it's running. Yeah, I would agree. I wouldn't be interested now. Right so, now anyway. No, they should, like I said, I, I told them they should have reached, this should have been a conversation. Okay. So, but yeah, it's just a conversation, you know, Tim is, I think, talking and so. Robin has a meeting. I don't know. Hi, Katie. It's all good. I actually reused this. Julie, so. Julie's been fine. Bye, <laughs> Julie. Bye. Bye. I get my bottle with me. Anything no. else before the board? Anything else anybody wants to bring up? Okay, our next meeting is March 8th. Entertain a uh, motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. 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 Me? Second. Louis, 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 Louis. Somebody. I said it. All, all people in favor signify by leaving. So, Julie, I think I, I have my notes wrong. So, it's both, all the votes were 5 0 until the end because Katie was gone. So, that's 4 0. Four oh, and the others were five. Thank you. If you have any questions, let me know. I will. Thank you, as always. Thank you so much. Thank yeah, you. Sure. Later, everybody. There.